Good evening and welcome to tonight's Zoning Board of Appeals virtual meeting. Per Executive Order 202.28 by the Governor of the State of New York, the Town of Smithtown is required to continue hosting all public meetings, either in person, in which case we must prohibit physical public contact, or public meetings can be held remotely via conference call or similar service. Additionally, per the executive order, the town continues to live stream, record, and transcribe each meeting. As a reminder for any resident wishing to view tonight's meeting, you can do so by clicking on the agendas and meeting button on the homepage of the town's website at www.smithtownnewyork.gov. You are all here tonight seeking relief from the Smithtown Zoning Ordinance, and it's our job to try to help you achieve the relief you are requesting whenever possible. It's up to you to provide this board with precise and accurate information so we can make a decision based on the facts presented tonight. This board must consider the five area variance considerations in order to render a decision, and they are as follows. Number one, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the variance. Number two, whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some, fe some feasible method for the applicant to pursue other than the area variance. Number three, whether the requested area variance is substantial. Number four, whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district. And number five, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created, which considerations shall be relevant to the decision of the board and shall not necessarily preclude the granting of the variance. Procedures for tonight's meeting. Cases will be called in the order they are advertised. After your case is announced by Mr. Donatio, the moderator will connect you to the meeting so you can present your case to the board. Once you have completed your presentation, if anyone on the board or in the planning department has any questions, they will be asked. Then any interested party who would like to speak on this case will be given one opportunity to do so. Then the applicant will be given the opportunity to respond to any questions and concerns after which the case will be closed. Once the public hearing is closed, no further information will be accepted concerning the case. You can contact the planning department after 12 p.m. tomorrow for the status of your case. Mr. Donatio? All righty, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first case on the agenda, case number 18514, John Allard, 50 Vanderbilt Motor Parkway, Comac. The location of the property, the northeast corner of Vanderbilt Motor Parkway and Austin Boulevard. The property is zoned LI. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum side yard from 20 feet to 13 feet for a proposed exterior second floor staircase to a proposed second floor dormer. Nicole, is there any way to get rid of that meeting is being recorded? Uh, Chairman, I shut it off. It should just be simple enough to click out of um, on your screen. Uh, I think we just lost the chairman. Give him a second to jump jump back in. Please, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, uh, John Alarde is actually online as well. I don't know if you want to uh, bring him in as well. Actually, would you do me a favor? Um, it's a good opportunity while we're waiting for the chairman to get back on the call. Um, if, if everybody could please just look at the way their names are listed on the participant screen. If you don't have a participant sidebar on your upper, uh, on the right-hand corner, just 
look to the bottom of your screen uh, towards the middle. It says participants. If you push participants, you'll see the sidebar will show up. Just double check how your name is listed. If you're a phone number or it's listed as iPhone um, and you are looking to speak and you could just go ahead and rename yourself, that would be a big help. Um, and, and to answer your question, Mr. Bartlett, I'm just trying to locate the uh, to Mr. Alardi. I, I don't know if he's showing up under an iPhone. Probably is um, showing up on an iPhone. Let me see if this is him here. I'm going to ask him to unmute himself and see if this is him. Yes, this is John Alardi. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to rename yeah, him. First shot. <laughs> first shot. Look at that. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay. And we're just waiting for our chairman to unmute. There you go. Again, I apologize for that. I must have hit the wrong button. <laughs> so we're back online. Um, can I have the applicant, please? Yes, uh, the applicant is John Alarde. He is also on the line. Uh, can I have the applicant first, please? Sure, John. Yes, this is John Alardi. All right, John. Uh, <clears throat> you just state your name and address for the record, please. Sure. My name is John Elardi, E L A R D E. And this is uh, a request as it relates to 50 Vanderbilt Motor Parkway in Comet. Okay, fine. And you would like uh, this gentleman, Rick, uh, to uh, speak on your behalf? That is correct. Okay. Rick, can you uh, state your name, spell your last name from the record, and give your address, please? Yes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is Rick Bartlett. I'm the principal architect at VAR Architecture with offices at 190 Motor Parkway, Suite 201 in Hop Hop. The spelling of the last name is B-A-R-T-L-E-T-T. -T -T. I'm here to represent the applicant, Mr. John Alarde, for his application for a setback variance the property located at 50 Motor Parkway in Colmac, which is located in the LI zoning district. Uh, the applicant is requesting a variance of chapter 322, subsection 9A of the building zone ordinance, ordinance which requires a 20 foot side yard setback. Um, the applicant recently purchased this building and plans to alter the existing second floor by constructing dormers so that that portion of the second floor area can be utilized as additional office space. Um, in developing this area, New York State Code requires a second means of egress. And after review and analysis of potential locations for the stair, it was determined that a second interior staircase would consume too much of the floor area and negatively impact the usable floor area of the building. Um, it was further determined that the eastern side yard would be the best location to construct this stair um, for egress purposes as it doesn't impact the existing parking on site and it would also not be visible from the street. Um, as, uh, as Blaze mentioned, the request is to reduce the side yard at the proposed stair from 20 foot to approximately 13 foot. And we respectfully ask your approval of the requested variance so that we can proceed with applications for permits to alter and subsequently occupy the subject building. I thank so the, you for the, the and I'll field any questions you may have. The staircase will be erected between your building and the building adjacent to you. That is correct. Right? Okay. And you're not going to be able to see this from the street? No. Okay, fine. Thank you. <clears throat> Does anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Planning? No, thank you. No. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to be heard on this application? Uh, no, Chairman. I will take this uh, time, though, to remind everybody to either utilize the raise hand function or the chat function if you wish to be heard on an application. Thank you. All right. Thank you. With that said, can I have a, a motion to uh, close this application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
The next case on the agenda, case number 18515, Allison Brevendosky, 354 Forest Lane, Smithtown. The location of the property, the south side of Forest Lane, 1,178 feet west of Brookside Drive. The property is owned R21. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum front yard from 50 feet to 28 feet, which is existing at 29 feet, for proposed 159 square foot front wraparound porch and 981 square foot second floor addition, adding to a non-conforming structure. Okay. Uh, good evening. Can I have the applicant, please? Good evening. Sarah. This is Allison Prevendosky. Okay. Um, are you going to present this tonight, Allison, yourself? Actually, I'm giving permission for our architect, Ed Butt, to speak on my behalf. Okay, fine. Uh, Ed, are you there? I'm just uh, just unmuting him right now. Okay, yeah, he's on the list. Okay, we'll get him. Thank you. There he is, Ed. He's got to hit. Hi, the, Ed. He's got to hit the <laughs> unmute button. Okay. How's that? Can you hear all me right. now? Yes. You're all set, Ed. <laughs> Ed, can you introduce yourself? Spell your last name and give your address, please, for the record. Yeah, hi. Good, good, uh, good evening, members of the board, Mr. Chairman. My name is Edward Butt with offices uh, located at 38 Laurel Drive in New Hyde Park, New York. Uh, I'm representing Allison uh, Prevendowski regarding this application. So, I have the uh, spelling, spelling of your last name, please. I'm sorry, it's B U T T. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I'm here to have on behalf of the, the, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Pravendowski, they're looking to do an, a smaller, well, a second floor addition to their existing residence. Um, the, the, the zone is, I believe, a B21 zone. Um, and they're looking to, and, this, and the setback requirements for this are uh, 50 feet. Uh, this house was purchased by the Pravendowskis back about 10 years ago. Um, and it was a pre existing uh, non conforming structure at that moment in time. Uh, what they have come to us uh, and asked us to do is to try and provide a second floor so that uh, their family is, is growing and they, they need the space on the second floor. So they're proposing a modest uh, second floor dormer addition uh, over the house to provide uh, rooms for their children. Um, so the uh, as you can see, the, the building and its structure would you know, are being proposed to remain where they are. Uh, there is a small uh, extension off the, the front of it that's taking the 29 feet to 28 feet, but it's just to give us a little bit more space in the living room area. Um, but other than that, uh, we're, uh, we're really, really just uh, respectfully requesting relief based on the fact that this is an existing building in its location. Um, I don't believe that it has an impact because even though it's um, it's closer than the other buildings, it's not that much closer. The building to the left is a, is a 30 feet away. Again, pre-existing non-conforming, I believe. And the building to the right is 41 feet. So. Uh, it is in keeping with the with the neighborhood context of the neighborhood. Um, yes, it is uh, self created, but um, I believe that the the application is uh, de minimis, and uh, I don't think that uh, it would have any adverse effect on the neighborhood uh, as far as uh, what we're presenting here. Thank you, Ed. Does anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, thank you. No, thank you. Question. Planning? No, thank you. No. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to be heard on this application? No, Chairman. No. All right. With that said, can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to close is accepted. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Ed. You're welcome. <laughs> bye bye. The next case on the agenda, case number 18516, Jack Stevens, 20 Legend Court, Smithtown. The location of the property is the southwest corner of Legend Court and Highgates Drive. The property is owned R21. The applicant is requesting variances to permit a three foot retaining wall, wall number one to be less than three feet to the top of a three foot retaining wall. To decrease the minimum setback of a retaining wall from the property line from three feet to zero, 
for an existing for existing two existing retaining walls, walls two and three. Uh, could I have the applicant, please? Good evening, Chairman. This is Jack Stevens. How are you, Jack? Uh, are you going to present this tonight yourself? No, sir. I have uh, Joe Walker from Double Check Builders who will represent me. Okay. Uh, are you online, sir? I am. Can okay. you hear me? Uh, could you state your name, spell your last name for the record, and give you the, give your address, please? Uh, my name is Joe Walker, W-A-L-K-E-R, uh, Double Check Builders, doing business at 270 Ronkonkoma Avenue, Ronkonkoma, New York, 11779 for the last 27 years. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we're here before you tonight seeking a variance for two existing retaining walls. Although this uh, hardship could be considered as self-inflicted, it was not done so intentionally. It's the result of the homeowner hiring a contractor to build these walls because they were needed. It's a very hilly, steep uh, lot. And the uh, contractor, the Mason contractor, built the walls for safety and appearance uh, without regard to the town code because he really was not aware of the town codes. I have submitted a letter in support of this application by the next door neighbor who would be most affected by any decision that the board would make. And they are in favor of it, have offered no objection. You can see that the lot is irregular shaped and you can see from photos previously submitted that the landscaping is meticulously maintained throughout. Uh, on the whole, uh, balancing the equities of the situation as to the detriment of the neighborhood in, ter in terms to the neighborhood and the town, I don't think it creates any substantial change in the nature, character, context of the neighborhood and the cost with respect to moving the walls uh, would, would be substantial at this point. And also it could create a problem with respect to land moving and, and, and other issues with uh, safety for the, for the pool area and so forth. So as a whole, I hope that uh, the board might look favorably upon this, this uh, application uh, given the circumstances. Thank you. Is there anyone on the board that has any questions on this application? No, thank you. Oh, thanks. No. Uh, planning? No, thank you. No. Is there anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? No, Chairman. No. Can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank, thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, board. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. The next case on the agenda is case number 18517, Michael and Lisa McNeese, 9 Alpine Court, Smithtown. The location of the property, the south side of Alpine Court, 252 feet east of Altice Lane. The property is zoned R15. The applicant is requesting variances to reduce the minimum side yard from 16 feet to 8 feet, to reduce the total side yards from 34 feet to 24 feet for a proposed 18 by 26 foot semi in-ground swimming pool. Uh, good evening. Can I have the applicant, please? Good evening, Chairman. This is Lisa McNeese. And Michael McNeese, how are you? Good. Good evening. Uh, are you going to present the case yourself? Yes, we are. Okay, fine. Go right ahead. Sure. Um, we're looking to request um, the reduction of our minimum side yard um, to install an in-ground pool um, to stay within the zoning that's um, currently affecting our property um, would would have an impact on a um, on a retaining wall that subdivides our property. Our hill, it's very hilly, um, so in, to put the pool over closer and get that um, minimum footage. Um, we would be able to utilize that um, the retaining wall that's on the property to install a safety fence um, to to barrier off that area for our children and our um, our dog. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, does anyone in the board have any questions on this application? No, thank you. No, thank you. Planning. No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? No, Chairman. No. <clears throat> Can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. 
Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Good night. Thank Thanks you, so Chairman. Much. Thank you, the board. <clears throat> The next case on the agenda, case number 18518, Ron Yakul, Big Plans, LLC, 5 Plant Avenue, Hop Hop, the location of the property, the northeast corner of Kennedy Drive and Plant Avenue. The property is owned LI. <clears throat> Excuse me. The applicant is requesting variances to reduce the minimum required parking from 191 to 117 spaces. To eliminate required landscape islands, Four proposed 14,645 square foot one story addition to an existing commercial building. Uh, could I have the applicant, please? Yes, Bram Weber, Weber Law Group, 290 Broad Hollow Road, Suite 200 E, Melville, for the applicant. And good evening. Good evening. So, uh, so again, uh, yes, as um, Mr. Donario said, this is a, a expansion of uh, roughly 14,000. 845 square feet to an existing building. Um, this is for a business called FragranceX.com. They're a distributor of name brand um, colognes and perfumes. They've been at this facility for more than 10 years. Um, it's just a fantastic story. Their business is growing, local company. Um, so to, uh, to accommodate uh, the additional need for storage space, um, they're asking for this uh, reasonable uh, expansion, um, no additional uh, uh, demand uh, on the property itself. Again, it's just for consumer goods storage. Um, Mike Marinas is here with me. I, uh, I thought I would turn it over to him uh, briefly to describe the proposed expansion as well as um, just speak to the parking analysis report that's been submitted as part of this record uh, of the record on this case uh, for the parking variance. So if, uh, if I may, Mr. Marinas. Thank you, Bram. Hi, my name can you introduce yourself? Spell your last name, give the address please for the record. Sure, my name is Michael Marinas. I'm a licensed engineer in the state of New York. I work for the firm Barrett, Bonacci and Van Wheel, 175A Commerce Drive, Hopog, New York. Thank you. The application is for the uh, 14,000 square foot building addition, which is on the north side of the existing building, which is currently a paved parking lot. Uh, so in order to accommodate the additional parking for the project, we have, we're proposing to expand parking to the north. So all of the parking that you see along the north side of the property is essentially new parking. Um, the town code requires two parking spaces per thousand square feet. Um, and we have studied the requirements, the actual need for parking uh, for the site and we uh, performed counts on the site and we determined that a uh, parking ratio of 0.5 parking stalls per thousand is more realistic. That was slightly greater than the Institute of uh, Transportation Engineers uh, ratio of 0.4 per thousand. And so when we analyze the parking need based upon the actual counts, we determined that we would need um, sorry, a total of, <laughs> 53 parking stalls, which is slightly higher than the actual number count, uh, counted. As you see before you right now, presently the, built, the site uses no more than 46 parking stalls at any one time. And even with the expansion, we don't expect it to increase to more than 53. So what we've done in the design is provide actual construction of 67 parking stalls that you see along the north side and allocated some additional space for land bank parking along the east side of the, of the site, which we're not proposing to build at this time because we want to preserve the buffer along the east side. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No questions. No, thank you. No, thank you. Planning? No, thank you. No. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to be heard on this application? No, Chairman. No. Do you have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. 
Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Stay well. <laughs> The next application on the agenda is case number 18519, Mark Wittenberg, 7 Delaware Avenue, Comac. The location of the property is the north side of Delaware Avenue, 225 feet east of Comac Road. The property is zoned R10. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum front yard from 40 feet to 36 feet for a proposed 45 square foot roof over front porch. Good evening. Can I have the applicant, please? I'm uh, Mark and Suzanne Wittenberg. Hello, Mark. Uh, are you going to do the presentation tonight yourself? Yes. Okay, fine. Go right ahead. Uh, we are seeking uh, front yard relief to construct a 45 square foot uh, roof over front entry porch, uh, where 40 feet is required, 36 feet is proposed. Uh, this project. Um, basically completes a uh, whole house renovation project that we started about uh, two and a half years ago. And um, the house, uh, one of the other things about this house is it faces Richmond Place, which comes and dead ends, you know, ends in front of our house. So we think this will give us a uh, somewhat of a buffer from the headlights um, shining in our front door. Um, other than that, uh, we think that this project will improve curb appeal and, and not negatively affect the neighborhood. Uh, driving sight lines aren't uh, affected. No, uh, we don't think there's any negative environmental impact. Uh, it's sort of self-created, but uh, that, you know that's where the front door is, so that's where the, the porch has to go. <laughs> um, it'll give us some protection from the elements It'll get rid of that ugly builder's stoop and we'll have a nice uh, um, finished uh, concrete stoop there with the roofed over area. We plan on bringing the floor of the stoop up so it's kind of level with the first floor, so it's safer. And we talked to uh, a couple of the neighbors, uh, the neighbors immediately to the left and the right of us, they're both uh, for the project, they can't wait to see what it looks like uh, when it's over. And that's our presentation. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> Is there anyone on, <coughs> excuse me, anyone on the board has any questions on this application? No, thank you. Oh, thank you. Planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that'd like to be heard on this application? No, Chairman. Huh? I have a motion to close the application, please. Move. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion, Aye. motion carry. Thank you. Aye. Good night now. Thank Aye. you. The next case on the agenda is case number 18520, Keith DeSimone. 23 Flamingo Drive, Smithtown. The location of the property, the west side of Flamingo Drive, 217 feet north of Signet Drive. The property is owned R21. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the front yard from 50 feet to 47 feet for a proposed 178 square foot roof over front porch. Good evening. Can I have the applicant, please? Hi, this is Meredith DeSimone, the applicant. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, are you going to present this tonight, Meredith? Uh, no, I have the our architect on the phone, DTT Designs. Okay, fine. Thank you. Yes. Oh, hi. Good evening. Hi. Uh, um, could you state your name for the record, spell your last name, and give your company's address, please? Sure. Denise Trifaro, T-R-I-F-A-R-O of DTT Designs, 1165. Broadway Avenue, Holbrook, New York, 11741. Thank you. Okay, so um, today we're asking um, for 
um, a relief in three feet, basically only for the front portico area there and two feet for the rest of the front porch. But so for that 12.4 feet, we're asking um, for a three foot relief and for the 24.8, the balance of the covered porch, um, only a two feet, a two foot uh, variance. And it will um, make the aesthetics from the front of the house very pleasing and it is not out of character um, to have a front porch in the neighborhood. Thank you. Is there anyone on the board that has any questions on this application? No, thank you. No, no thank you. Planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that'd like to be heard on this application? No, Chairman. No. Can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you and uh, good evening. Thank you. You too. The next case on the agenda, case number 18521, Jeffrey Stradinger, two-story Book Lane, St. James. The location of the property is the northwest corner of Storybrook Lane and Pumpkin Road. The property is zoned R21. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum front yard from 50 feet to 15 feet on Pumpkin Road for proposed 28 foot by 38 foot in ground pool. Good evening. Could I have the applicant, please? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Amy DeVito for the applicant. Okay, uh, you submitted uh, power of attorney and everything, correct? That's correct. Okay, fine. Uh, could you, again, just state your name, spell your last name, give the address for the record, please? Sure, Amy DeVito, um, uh, 1031 Main Street, Port Jefferson, New York, 11777. And the spelling of your last name? D-E-V-I-T-O. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Chairman, uh, my client is proposing to erect a uh, roughly 38 foot by 18 foot irregular swimming pool. Um, as you can see on the survey, he is a corner lot. Um, we are proposing to maintain 15 feet from the pumpkin road frontage. <clears throat> the reason why uh, my client is proposing the pool in the location that you see is because it is the um, area in the yard that actually already has a natural clearing uh, with no shade trees around it. Um, moreover, the applicant has a young child with one on the way, and they want to be able to completely fence in the pool for safety reasons. So the thought process was that they would erect a fence, a pool fence, uh, beginning at the north uh, eastern corner of the foundation and go north to the north property line. <clears throat> and then across to the east side of the property to completely enclose the pool. Um, you can also see actually in the photos that are being shown right now, that is the pumpkin road side of the property. So that's the east side of the property that you're looking toward. Uh, there are a row of trees completely shielding the pool from uh, any passerbys. Um, it's a, a, also a dead end street. And uh, moreover, the property actually abuts up to the um, Hamlet Estates HOA, uh, it looks like what was a buffer for their community when it was built, or either that or an easement, I'm not sure, but it's an undeveloped piece of property. So um, we, we do not feel that, although the, the it is a pool in the front yard, we uh, this property is unique and we do not feel that it would create a negative impact on the neighborhood. Uh, there's certainly a, a number of pools in the neighborhood, um, <clears throat> so it's uh, most certainly not out of character. We were able to find Two similar properties, which I'll name for the record, one at 115 Cambon Avenue, that's C-A-M-B-O-N Avenue in St. James, also having a pool in a front yard, of a property very similar to the applicant, and then 17 King Arthur's Court, uh, also with a pool in a front yard similar to what we are proposing today. Um, again, I just want to reiterate that um, there is an area in this yard already cleared, which is where we're proposing the pool um, in an effort to obviously in, enjoy the pool in what functions as my client's rear yard. And most importantly for safety, um, this will have no impact on the environment. Um, and it, although it is a pool in a front yard, we do not feel it's substantial because of the uniqueness of the property. 
and I am happy to answer any questions the board may have. All right, thank you. Uh, does anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that like to be heard on this application? No, Chairman. No. <coughs> Could I have a motion to close the application? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you. Good, Good evening. evening. Good night. The next case on the agenda is case number 18507, 333 Blue North LLC, 52 North Country Road, Smithtown. The location of the property is the east side of North Country Road, 746 feet north of Middle Country Road. The property is zoned NV. The applicant is requesting a variance to increase the size of a proposed ground sign from 32 square feet to 52 square feet. Uh, good evening. Could I have the applicant, please? Good evening, uh, Chairman and members of the board. My name is uh, Rosemary Uzun, R-O-S-E-M-A-R-I-E. -E. Last name is U-Z-U-N. U as in uniform, Z as in zebra, U for uniform, and for Nancy. And I'm with my partner here, Cinderella Uli. Uh, are you going to speak, Cinderella? How do you, how do, you yes. how do you spell your partner's last name? Uh, it's only two letters, U for uniform, Y for Yankee. And Thank you. We, oh, go ahead. Okay, who would like to start? Okay, um, I'm Rosemary Uzun, and I reside at uh, 2861 Locust Avenue in Ronkonkoma, New York. And um, we are requesting to alter the uh, signage set by town from 32 square feet. And we are proposing 55 square feet to accommodate our three business names. And we are the lessee of the property located at 52 North Country Road in Smithdown. Um, excuse me, did you say 55 square feet or 50, it's, it's 55? 55? Correct, to accommodate three business names. It's on the proposal here, it's 52 square feet. I'm sorry, so let me correct that, Your Honor. So it's 52 square feet. It's 52. Correct. Okay, fine, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, does anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to be heard on this application? No, Chairman. No. Can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman and members of the board. We can't wait to meet you all. Thank you one, so one much. Second. One second. We haven't oh. closed it yet. Oh, sorry. Okay. A motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Now, have a nice evening. Thank you, Chairman and members of the board. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. You too. And I believe that concludes our hearing for tonight. Thank you.